ordinary till you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Ebulomo Adekunle in our major story. Nigerian military helicopter on training mission crashes near Bama in Burno State. Also in this program, Defense Headquarters denies Boko Haram's takeover of Dambua in Burno State, vows no part of Nigeria will be ceded to terrorists. President Goodluck Jonathan orders security chiefs to stop registration or deportation of Nigerians in any part of the country. Outside Nigeria, United States proceeds for ceasefire in Gaza conflict as Israel continues assault. And tonight in business news, Nigeria's investment in telecoms infrastructure reaches $6 billion mark, but not enough near Brazil and South Africa. On sports tonight, England Captain Steven Gerrard retires from international football. And now the details. Senate President David Mark has described the death of former Petroleum Minister Rilwan Lukman as a huge loss to Nigeria. Senator Mark noted that Lukman was one of few Africans who left their positive footprints on the global stage. The Senate's president pointed out that his performance as the then Petroleum Minister earned him a higher responsibility to become OPEC Secretary General. He recalled the exploits of Lukman as then member of the Federal Executive Council when he brought his wealth of experience to bear in the administration of Nigeria, especially during trying times. A Nigerian Air Force MI-35 helicopter on training mission crashed following a technical fault at a location south of Bama in Brno State on Monday. A statement by the Director, Defense Information, Chris Olukolade in Abuja, says investigation has commenced to unravel the circumstances that led to the accident. The statement, however, says that the crash was not as a result of any animal action. Ulukoladi added that details on the crash will be made known as investigation progresses. The Nigerian military says Boko Haram is not in control of Dambua in Burno State. Briefing journalists in Abuja, Defence Spokesman Brigadier General Chris Ulukoladi maintained that no part of the country will be ceded to terrorists. He added that more soldiers have been deployed to fortify and strengthen the troops on ground to ensure that the area is secured. The Nigerian military will not concede any portion, any inch of this country to any group of terrorists. We will keep farming up and preparing to reverse any form of insecurity in any part thereof. Arawa Youth Foundation, the pressure group pushing for the registration of non-indigents in northern Nigeria, has taken their course to the Kaduna State House of Assembly. The group is insisting that southerners residing in the north and those willing to do business there must register within 10 days. Members of the group presented a proposed bill titled Registration of Southerners and Allied Matters to the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Sheo Tahir. 
In his response, Tahir assures the group that the House will look into the issues raised in the bill and do what is necessary. The group said in a letter attached to the bill that it is meant to protect Kaduna and the North against terrorism, armed robbery, baby factories, pipeline vandalism and other activities allegedly carried out by Southerners. President Kulak Jonathan has ordered security chiefs to stop the registration or deportation of Nigerians in any part of the country. This is one of the decisions taken at a four-hour-long meeting he held with service chiefs and heads of security agencies at the presidential villa. The council also deliberated on the ongoing war against insurgency and efforts to rescue the 219 schoolgirls. It first began in Imo State, where the government was said to have ordered the registration of northerners. And although the government denied issuing such orders, some states are taking retaliatory action. But now, President Jonathan has ordered security chiefs to nip such plans in the board. The council resolved that the issue of registration of Nigerians anywhere in the country and deportation should stop forthwith. I think to re-emphasize the, uh, the importance the president has attached to this. That's why I said the two of us should address you people. This must stop forthwith. Security operatives should not be involved. They should not be involved in anybody trying to register people, in anybody trying to deport people. Security operatives must henceforth not be involved. Anybody found, any operative police, SSS, involved, found being involved in this will be severely dealt with. The government is concerned that this could trigger a worse crisis than what Boko Haram has created in the country. And this it is determined to prevent. The council discussed the reaction. You know the reaction by the Kanu state, people, uh, some people in the groups in Kanu and other parts of the country. The council observed that this threat was more potent than Boko Haram and could disintegrate the country. And we take this very seriously for people to deport people, for people to take people from one place to the other, for people to ask uh, for registration of indigenous, no matter where they are, they are free to settle anywhere they like. The security chiefs also give situation reports on the war against insurgency during the four hour long meeting. They will not give details of this, but simply solicited public support. This war can be won by Nigerian security forces and we need the support and cooperation of every Nigerian to do that. For now, the government is bent on putting a stop to what it sees as a brewing crisis and is set to summon an emergency council of state meeting to further drive home its stance. Representative of the United Nations Development Program in Nigeria, Dauda Toure, has described Nigeria as too important economically and politically to disintegrate and called on all leaders to put their acts together and solve the current security challenges facing the country. Toure spoke just as the Director General of the National Institutes for Policy and Strategic Studies, Kuru, Near Jas, Mohamed Tijani Bande says the institutes were strengthening the capacity of political parties to develop strong and enduring political institutions. The NIPSS boss says the center was conceived as a capacity building and resource center for political parties to strengthen their capacity for policy dialogue, conflict management, media outreach and democratic initiative of party leadership. This, according to him, is with the overall goal of enhancing the democratic quality of political parties and their engagements with the wider political process. They both spoke at the commencement of the seventh course for youth leaders of political parties, which was held at the Political Party Leadership and Policy Development Center. The program is being funded by UNDP with active coordination of NIPSS. Nigeria security chiefs insist that they know the whereabouts of over 200 schoolgirls abducted by insurgents from Chibok almost 100 days ago. Director General of the State Security Service, Ekmeyong Ita, says authorities are just being careful. He spoke with journalists at the end of a meeting of security chiefs with President Jonathan. The fight against Boko Haram is like a footballer. You know, the, when the Germans played... Argentina, it was only that one goal that they scored that everybody's remembering. The other goals that were stopped, 
Nobody will remember. There are several things the government is doing. There are several, one, there are several attacks that government has stopped. Nobody will remember those one. Nobody, because we don't tell you. But several things are going on. The issue of Chibok girls is government is taking efforts, making efforts. We know where they are, but we don't want to endanger their lives. That is the truth. We want to take it gradually and release them at the appropriate time. We know where they are. You, take, you can go to bed with that. The Nigerian authorities have warned parents against allowing their children in schools to be used for mass rallies against the government. Coordinator of the National Information Center, Mike O'Mary, said at a press briefing in Abuja that some individuals and groups have been mobilizing students across the country. This, according to him, is part of a plot to commemorate the 100th day of the abducted Chiba girls in captivity. Information available to us is that... Uh groups are planning to mobilize children from across the country, from within Abuja, to uh, commemorate the 100 days of the abduction of the Chibot girls. Well, it is the legitimate right of citizens to protest, to demand for whatever they believe in. And in a democracy, especially the kind that we preach, we practice, our president is committed to ensuring that every citizen has his say. But on that note, we wish to advise parents to be mindful of this development and not to allow their children to be used for subversive activities and tendencies. Don't forget that all of us are standing together with the parents of the Chibok girls and, of course, with the girls. There is no need for us to create another round or another set of uh, uh, catastrophe by leading our children where they ought not to be. The Director General National Orientation Agency called on parents to be cautious of the planned rally. Security operatives have denied arresting or detaining a leader of the Bring Back a Girls movement, Ubi Ezekwisili, at the Abuja airport. The former education minister had claimed she was harassed by security personnel who briefly held on to her travelling document on her way to London. But spokesperson for the Department of State Security, Marilyn Auger, maintained that Ezekwisili went through normal security checks like other passengers. She also cautioned citizens to verify facts before sharing information that could further threaten the security situation of the country. The SSS clears all passengers this to those that travel the to outside this country or come into this country. Why was Bushi need to tweet? Let people to stop trying to, to aggregate to themselves for necessary importance. When we have serious security challenges at our hands, security issues must not be trivialized for any reason. Someone at the airport, I don't know how many people have passed through the airport. I have. And I know that every time, even as DG, National Orientation Agency, I will submit my passport for check. They will check me, are you okay? All of those, I subject myself to that. And after that, they allow me to go. And every citizen, they would have to stamp your passport before you leave. So if you are going through these processes, and then the next thing, because you have access to phone and so forth and so on there, you tweet, I am being detained by, by is, 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 I, I think, Citizens should not subject our country to this kind of thing. Acting Governor of Adamawa State, Umar Fentiri, says Murita Lainyako was not impeached because it teamed up with the opposition. We'll bring you details of this and more after this break. Cool TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453 3407 at 24 hour news station 
You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV. Leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. Nigerians continue to Nine, the city of Lagos. Be the first to know. Call TV News from the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. A federal high we news. break the news. One Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news spreads. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. A 24-hour news station. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, and Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Thank you for being there. Acting Governor of Adamawa State, Umar Fintiri, says Maritala Nyako was not impeached because it teamed up with the opposition. Speaking shortly after a meeting with President Goodluck Jonathan in Abuja, Fintiri maintained that the former governor was removed because he stole public funds. He absolved the presidency of blame but reaffirmed his stance that the People's Democratic Party is now in control of Adamawa State. We're into confidence building. Uh, having uh, removed Nyaku and the destruction of infrastructure and the uh, uh, morale of our people. So we have gone into building uh, confidence. We are trying to pay our salaries, uh, salaries of workers because for months he has not paid their salaries and that is what we are doing now. What's the purpose of this your visit to the president? I came to see the president as the leader of this country, as our president, uh, to give him the details of situations in Adama and as the acting governor. You were quoted as saying that you have returned PDP stolen mandates to PDP. Is that the purpose why you removed? Miyako? You saw the allegations and they've been proven by the panel, so that cannot uh, be the reason why we removed the man and there are so many other issues that we could not even bring uh, as part of the allegations that form his removal. But uh, definitely as a PDP man, that has taken over as the acting governor in Adama State. Uh, I have to say that I brought back to my party the stolen mandate by the former governor Nyaku. In this country, people are used to whatever situations that happen is about money. Sir, Who gave the money? You have heard uh, about allegations being made by APC that uh, the president is trying to, you know, muzzle the opposition by ensuring that APC governments are removed through the legal process. Nyaku, is, Nyaku is not an opposition man. He only stole the mandate of PDP into uh, APC. And how did the president get involved in this local issue in Adama? The man has stolen our money. That is the bottom line of it. Former head of state and a stalwart of the main opposition, All Progressives Congress, Muhammadu Buhari, says the gale of impeachment spreading across the state governed by opposition parties was an indication that Nigeria is drifting into anarchy. He noted that whether or not President Gulag Jonathan was unaware of the impeachment of governors, what could not be denied was that it was happening under him, adding that the development would not go well with the nation's democracy. The former head of state in a statement titled 
pulled back Nigeria from the brink, made available to reporters in Kaduna State, argued that he had in his private capacity discussed the current situation with the president. He asked the president to tarry a while and ponder the impact of recent events in the polity under his watch on the survival of the nation and the sustenance of its democracy. It says subverting the constitution in a desperate move to impeach a state governor or deploying the institutions of state, some of which are symbols of the country's unity, just to kick an out-of-favor state governor in the stomach could only breed anarchy and lead the nation down the slippery slope to chaos. Activist and lawyer Festus Kayamo says President Gulag Jonathan should wade into what it describes as a comedy of legal errors in the Adama state crisis. In an open letter to the president, Kayamo argued that the state house of assembly cannot declare the position of a deputy governor vacant. This, according to him, is because the purported resignation of Bala Ingalari is not in line with the constitution unless received by the governor. Kiyamu noted that since Inglari was not indicted by the seven-man panel, he should have been sworn in to complete the tenure of the impeached governor. He also maintained that anyone who wins the election in October can only complete the unexpired tenure of Muritala Inyaku. The Nigerian human rights community comprising of some non-governmental organizations have condemned the impeachment move by the Nasara state lawmakers as self-serving and corrupt. Oluwashe Yadigoke has details of the press briefing organized by the Nigerian human rights com community in this report presented from our studio. Barely two weeks ago was the governor of Adama State, Motala Yako, impeached by the state legislature based on allegations of gross financial misconduct levied against him by the lawmakers. A few days ago, the Nasara State lawmakers are accusing Governor Tanko Amakura and missing local government joint funds, among other offenses in which lawmakers are seeking to impeach the governor. The president of the Coalition of Nigerian Civil Rights Group, Kendi Adebuyi says the Nasara lawmakers' action portrays them as lacking character and dignity. While we support the removal of governors who contravene the laws, the basis of which they were elected in the first place, we, however, strongly condemn removals induced by financial gains of the lawmakers. That is exactly what is happening in Nigeria today. The presidency is bent on taking control of all the 36 states, thereby threatening the plural content of Nigerian democratic culture. The deputy national president of the Arawa Youth Forum, Mohamed Kudu Abubakar, condemns the move by the Nasara lawmakers. So it is quite clear that any governor who is not in line with the president's uh, 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 interest must go. It has happened during Obasanjo, and I'm not surprised what is happening now. So, but the, 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 the caution is that people of the state who elect the governor, because if you listen to those who protest in the Nasarawa state, we are saying since the inception of that state, no governor in Nasarawa state have done what Al Makura does in, in, in the state. So, why the removal? Which means those people who are planning the removal were against the progress of that state. The group calls on Nigerians to join in the crusade against impunity and dictatorship in Nigeria. In Lagos, the Federal Road Safety Commission has pledged its support to work with the Lagos State Government in ensuring sanity on their Pepper Port Road. FRS Sector Commander Chidi Nkwonta made the statement at a press briefing held at the Commission's office. Omotayolo has details. The deplorable state of our Papa Road, which impacts both human and economic activities, has been a source of worry to the Lagos State Government. Lagos State Sector Commander of the FRSC, Chidi Nwokta, says the problem cannot be overcome by only road enforcement activities, but with joint efforts from all stakeholders, especially the tank firm owners and business operators in the area. He added that the Commission has deployed over 300 officials to regulate the area, but they achieve only little. If the men pack their trucks, and then there are hundreds of trucks on the bridge, and they all go away, how many trucks are you going to tow? Where are you going to tow them? Well, how will you even have access to go and tow them? The owners of the tank farms, I have not seen their role. They have not been in any meeting. They are not playing any role. They are the ones causing the trouble, 
They are the ones locating their time farms in the wrong places. They are the ones without loading base. They are the ones making the vehicles to queue on the road. And they are not giving in anything. So I want to use this opportunity to call on the owners of the tank farms to do something and make sure that these roads are cleared. They should do something by providing loading base. They should reorganize their own loading processes, make sure that there's integrity in the process of loading, so that even if the people are restricted to a particular place, they can be sure that when it's their turn, they will load without somebody jumping the queue. We work to advise that a speedy walk on the patching of the road will go a long way to make life a lot easier for road users, while the issue of proper operations of tanker drivers is considered on the other end. He commended the effort of the Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashala for making conscious efforts to solve the Apapa Road menace and called on everyone involved, including the federal government, to work together in finding a lasting solution to the deplorable state of the road. Omota Yoalo, Core TV News, Lagos. Meanwhile, Chiding Water has urged motorists to obtain the new number plate and re-register for a new driver's license on or before the 1st of August 2014 to avoid any form of legal action against them. It says that official fee for driver's license is 6,000 Naira 350 and plate number at 12,000 Naira, while warning Nigerians to desist from touts who are likely to charge more and issue fake plate number and license. To come back. The new deadline is 1st of August 2014. We will start enforcement and uh, it will do you well to go back immediately and replace your, change your old plate number for the new one and procure your driver's licenses. You must go yourself. You must sit before the camera and do your physical capture. You must do your biometric capture yourself. If anybody does it for you, then the license you have is a fake driver's license. And quarter added that though Nigerians did not embrace the idea at first, it would be advantageous if the good of the policy is seen above any form of inconvenience. If your car in the new dispensation, you cannot register it. So you're securing your car with just 12,000 Naira. In the past, somebody could steal your car and go and repaint it and then just go to the roadside corner and cut plate number and put there. You can't do it now because if you change the color of the car, Get another plate number and put. It means you have to change the engine of the car, change the chassis of the car. You know what it means to change chassis of the car? It's not attractive to any thief. Lagos State's Governor Babatunde Fashola has inaugurated a three man panel of inquiry to unravel the immediate and remote causes of the accident that led to the vandalization of some BRT buses on Ikorudi Road. Abiolo Luwale was there. His report is presented from our studio. On Friday, July 4th, the Papela Ikorudi Road was greeted with violence, leading to the destruction of some BRT buses by yet to be identified persons. The outrage was caused by an accident involving a BRT bus and a military officer which allegedly led to the death of the soldier. The inauguration of the panel of inquiry, according to Governor Fashala, is to unravel what led to the July 4th incident. He says the successful collection of representation from the military and the bus owners will make the job easier for the tribunal. There are many questions that arise. Did the soldiers do this? They did it. Who did it? I think it is important to know, important also, if it was not the soldiers, the Nigerians should know and help maintain and sustain its reputation and help reinforce the trust that the Nigerian people also have in the Nigerian military. The chairman of the tribunal, retired Justice Adini Adibaju, says they will do their best to investigate the incidents. We will do our best in arriving at a just and unbiased conclusion to the assignment that has been given us. We shall do our work with due diligence and we believe that within the time period given us, we may well be able to, we shall be able to complete this assignment. Members of the tribunal are Nuruddin Ogbara and Jude Igbanoi. The panel of the inquiry has 60 days to submit its report. At this point, we'll take another break on Core TV Primetime News. And when we return, Sabena Izoku will be here with the business news.
Core TV News, expanding your view. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Core TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 at 24 hour news station. Core TV News presents a platform with presence in over 30 states of the Federation. The show to be had. For live coverage of events, we have the capacity to deliver from anywhere in Nigeria and beyond. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733-014-533-407 at 24 hour news station. Hello there, you're welcome to the world of business with me, Sabena Izuku. Nigeria said it has invested an estimated of $6.6 .6 billion in telecom infrastructure through 2010 to 2012. With more than 127 million active mobile subscription in Nigeria, Africa's largest economy by gross domestic product significantly lags behind fast-growing economies of Brazil and South Africa in terms of telecommunication investment per capita. According to the World Bank, Nigeria invested an estimated $6.6 .6 billion in telecoms infrastructure from 2010 through 2012, which works out to a total of about $40 per person. Brazil, on the other hand, has a telecom investment per capita of $106 to $7 between 2010 and 2012. Brazil and South Africa spent about $127 and $62 more per person, respectively, on the telecoms infrastructure as of March 2014. Brazil has a mobile subscription base on $273 million. This worrying development, according to the analysts, does not bode well for Nigeria's st strategic objectives of becoming one of the top 20 economies by the year 2020. The need for significant investment in network expansion initiative is highlighted if Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, intends to be a thaw in the economies it aspires to be like. The inability of past sector operators to pay up over $30 billion they owe the Nigerian Gas Company, a subsidiary of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, is posing a big challenge to the success of the power sector privatization and slowing down the growth of the gas sector. The Minister of Petroleum Resources, Desi Alessi Madwiki, who disclosed this during an interview, says the debt is crippling gas suppliers. Efforts to expand their operation and increase the volume of gas supply to the generating plants, as well as undermining the inability of the generating plant to deliver su sufficient electricity to the distribution companies. But the new investor says they are currently more concerned with the known availability of gas than their debts to the banks. More than gas will mean that they will be in business and therefore be able to service their loans. Alice Madwike says there must be an improved payment performance, assuring that the efforts were being made to ensure gas supply growth in line with the increase in demands. The nation's insurance industry may be losing an estimated 58 billion naira premium annual, annually for the over. 70 billion naira expected from compulsory mode to third-party insurance. 
The Director General of Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, CIIN, Kola Ahmed, stated this in an interview. Ahmed says the implication is the loss of 12 billion naira collected as revenue from the new motorists who patronize genuine operators for the license which is usually demanded by the police and other vehicles inspectors at the checkpoints. The inability of the police to discern genuine papers and lack of aggressive marketing and monitoring on the part of the genuine insurance operators have incidentally been threatened by the growing presence of quack operators and vehicle licensing offers across the nation. He also says the easy of fake insurance certificates paraded everywhere as a major concern for the industry, adding that it requires the collaboration of every stakeholder to ensure compliance. And on the forest market, the Naira is 0.21% against the U.S. dollar on Monday after some importers took advantage of its recent appreciation against the green back to lock-in rates. The local currency eased after last week's gain, closing at 162 Naira, 0.25 cobble to a dollar on Monday after closing Friday at 161 Naira, 0.90 cobble. Dealers say some importers have set limit orders to buy hard currency and are in the market after recent gains. It is local unit of the ENI sold $11.5 million, but not enough to lift the Naira. Africa's biggest economy relies on imports for around 80% of what it consumes. All companies in Nigeria sell hard currencies to obtain Naira to fund their local obligations. Therefore, Naira is expected to strengthen this week because of the possible dollar sales by some multinational companies. And on the stock market report, the equity transaction on the Nigerian stock exchange ended on a bearish note today. The Nigerian Stock Exchange All Shares Index depreciated by 107.46 points to close lower at 42,784.39 basis point. Market capitalization decreased 0.25% to close lower at 14.127 trillion naira. In all, a total of 535 million shares valued at 4.37 billion naira were exchanged in 5,862 deals. Report shows that Mobile PLC topped the gainers chart followed by Total PLC, Nigerian Brewers PLC, Wando PLC, and PZ PLC. On the other hand, Seplat PLC led the loser's chart, followed by 40 Oil PLC, Unilever PLC, and NCR PLC, and Guinness PLC. Meanwhile, here are the top five trades. And that's it on business news. Coming up next at the World of Sports with Tolu Ojomi. Please stay with us. Nigerians continue to Tonight, the city of Lagos points a dog. Be the first to know. From the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. A federal high we course. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV. A 24 hour news station. Now, the ever exciting world of sports, Nigeria international goalkeeper Vincent Dayama has declared that he has not yet caught time on his distinguished international career. The 31 year old made his debut for the Super Eagles in 2002 and has gone on to rack 94 caps for the national team. He entered after the 2014 FIFA World Cup that he would quit the Eagles, but has now stated that he still has unfinished business with the reigning African champions. The Lilio S. goalkeeper was speaking moments after he received an award for excellence presented by the GovOps Management, organizers of the annual Ibo Football Awards in Uyu, southern Nigeria. Ayama said he was pleased with the accolade and promised to work harder in future. Super Focus head coach Edwin Ocon has admitted that the African Women Championship AWC draws appear good for his side, but insists 
that her side will not undervalue any team when the competition gets underway. The draws which took place in Windhoek on Saturday, Nigeria was drawn in Group A with host Namibia, Zambia and Cordova, where Group B boasts has South Africa, Cameroon, Ghana and Algeria. According to Okun, the pairing looks easy for the Super Falcons, but pointed out that the Ivorians had eliminated 22 champions like Guterres Guinea and host Namibia and would not be treated with levity. The AWC finals were held from October 11 to 25 in Namibia. The winner, runner-up and third place team automatically become Africa's representatives at the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup, built for Canada. In the meantime, England captain Steven Gerrard has retired from international football after winning 114 caps. Gerrard, 34, won his first cap in a 2-0 win over Ukraine in 2000 and played for the last time at the 2014 World Cup in a 0-0 draw with Costa Rica. Gerrard will now assume a high-profile ambassador role with the Football Association. The England midfielder scored 21 times and represented his country at six major tournaments. Something for you on the EPL tonight. Chelsea and Atletico Madrid are in talks about Fernando Torres making a sensational return to the Vincent Cardron. Chelsea are looking for a transfer fee of £13 million for the player that signed from Liverpool for £50 million four years ago, but Atletico are trying to get that fee reduced. Atletico's chief executive, Miguel Angel Gilmarin, has spent the weekend in London discussing the transfer and will return to Madrid on Monday, where he will continue negotiating the deal. Chelsea are believed to want Atletico Madrid centre-back Joe Miranda and are trying to negotiate a price for him within the tourist discussions. More for you on sports now. Athletics, Jamaican world record holder, is in build, will lead and head to Rio de Janeiro following the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow to run a special 100 meters event. The race on Copacabana Beach on 14th of August completes both 2014 shuttle and means he will not face America's inform Justin Gatlin until 2015. Gatlin, 32, has won 11 consecutive 100 meters races and two 200 meters races this year. Both shuttle also includes 100 meters races in Poland on 23rd of August and the Zurich Diamond League on the 28th of August. That's all on sports tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Tulu or Jeremy. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Thank you for being there. And now outside Nigeria, President Barack Obama said United States Secretary of State John Kerry will push for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza when he arrives in Cairo. Obama said while Israel has the right to defend itself against a barrage of Hamas rockets, Washington has serious concerns about the rising number of Palestinian civilian deaths and the loss of Israeli lives. Kerry has added to Egypt, which has been a mediator in past Israel-Palestinian conflict and has taken the lead in trying to build a truce. all the assurances required to know that Iran is not seeking a nuclear weapon. There are great risks in what is happening there and in the potential of an even greater escalation of violence. We don't want to see that. Nobody does. Nor does Israel. But Israel has a right to defend itself. And it is important for Hamas not to be provoking and purposefully trying to play politics in order to gain greater followers for its opposition and use the innocent lives of civilians whom they hide in buildings and use as shields and put in danger. 
We urge all parties to support this ceasefire. And we support uh, and we ask all the members of uh, the Arab community, as they did yesterday at the Arab League meeting in Cairo, to continue to press uh, to try to get Hamas uh, to do the right thing here, which is cease the violence, engage in a legitimate negotiation, and, and protect the lives of uh, uh, people that they seem all too willing to put to risk. But we are prepared, as the United States is always prepared, and President Obama has said this again and again, to do everything in our power to help the parties come together to work to create a climate for genuine negotiations to be able to deal with the issues that truly separate these parties. And we stand prepared to do that. I am prepared to fly back to the region tomorrow if I had to, or the next day, or the next, in order to pursue uh, the prospects if this doesn't work. But they deserve, the Egyptians deserve the time and the space to be able to try to uh, make this initiative work, and we hope it will. Russia said its records show a Ukrainian fighter jet was flying close to the Malaysian airliner just before it crashed and a United States satellite was flying over rebel-held Ukraine at the time. Moscow also denied supplying Ukrainian separatists with BUK missile systems or any other weapons as it sought to head off international accusations that it was responsible for the downing of the Malaysian plane with 298 people on board. Lieutenant General Andrei Katupolov said the Malaysian plane strayed north of its planned route, adding that a Ukrainian Su-25 fighter jet, which is typically equipped with air-to-air -air missiles, had been recorded in the proximity of the Boeing 777. The Russian official also challenged Washington to release its satellite images to back up its claim that rebels targeted the Boeing 777 with a missile. And that's it on Core TV Primetime News. Before we go, a recap of our major stories. Nigeria military helicopter on training mission crashed near Bama in Brno State. We also reported that Defence Headquarters denies Boko Haram's takeover of Dambua in Brno State, vows no part of Nigeria will be ceded to terrorists. On behalf of the production crew, I am Ebulomo Adikule saying have a pleasant night rest.